With a career in technology spanning 30 years, Michael Shepard's roles have included delivering and creating information technology or IT and assistive technology or AT solutions for academia and professionals, opening computer centers in Zimbabwe and Guyana, system analysis and IT support. Over the last 15 years of his teaching skills and wealth of tech experiences has seen his career move towards providing assistive technology training to university students with specific learning differences such as dyslexia and dyspraxia. His main objective is to provide the best AT solutions to his many students, giving them the tools to empower themselves. As the founder of Spell Aid app, which is a dyslexia friendly dictionary app, and the author of the book, Dragon Professional, A Step Further, and this book is um, about de developing your own voice commands for software, Dragon, uh, for the software Dragon Professional. And Michael is also the founder of Vox Aid, which is the Dragon Professional add-on. I am very excited to introduce my guest today, and I would love for us to take a look at the interview. Okay. Hello and welcome to Think Dyslexia Network. As you all know, I am Dr. Lauren, and I am very excited to introduce my guest today. Michael, thank you for coming to the show. You are the founder and creator of Spell Aid. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, well, thank you for having me today. And um, yeah, that's right. Um, the founder of Spell Aid. So like I said, it's really nice to be here and join you on your platform, especially. Absolutely. So as you all know, for my audience, I love to outline the questions so we have an idea of where we're going. So the first one is really just about, can you tell us about what Spell Aid is? I know it caters to um, folks with dyslexia, dyspraxia, color blindness, color blindness and mm -hmm. um, English as a second language. So that is really interesting to touch on. Um, also too, I know that you've been in the, the uh, assistive technology world for quite some time. So mm -hmm. I'm really interested to learning more, to learn more about what that means. Okay. Um, spell aid, I'm really curious to know, is this being used in the educational institutions? Mm -hmm. And lastly, I know that you wrote a book about Dragon. So mm -hmm. those of you who are not familiar with the Dragon software, I know Michael will do an excellent job explaining what that is. So okay. let's delve into our first question. So Spell Aid mm -hmm. caters to people with dyslexia, dyspraxia, colorblindness, and those who speak English as a second language. So can you tell us a little bit more about what, what inspired you to create Spell Aid? Okay, so I'm um, really, it starts a long time ago. Um, you know, growing up, I had difficulty with spelling and quite often I would ask my mom, you know, how do I spell certain words? And the first thing she'd always say is go and look it up in a dictionary. Right. Um, I found that quite frustrating. Yes. Um, if I can't spell the word, the word, how can I find it, right? So, you know, then she would sit down with me and she would sort of say, you know, okay, what, is, what does it begin with? You know, you know, what are the letters that you think are in it? So fast forward a number of years forward, um, working with students um, who have dyslexia, dyspraxia, um, often don't like to use dictionaries. Mm -hmm. um, again, that same reason, you know, how can I use it if I can't spell, for example. So that led me to thinking, and I, I was looking around at various different dictionary apps um, right. by now um, that were available out there. And there's a vast array of dictionary apps out on the market. And what I was looking for was how can we allow or allow students, especially as that's what, who I work with predominantly, to be able to find the words they're looking for, but in a, in a variety of different ways. Most dictionaries only offer one field, just that search field. And basically, if you can't spell the word, you won't get the options. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that led me to thinking, OK, so what about if there's maybe like three fields? Maybe I know what the word starts with. Maybe I know some of the letters that it contains or the, word, the letters that the word ends with. So that set me on the path to how can I develop a, a, a dictionary app that really tries to cater for um, a wide you know, variety of learners? 
And I wanted to start off by, okay, I wanted a three field effect whereby a user could type in their, um, uh, the, the letters they believe it starts with and ends with and the letters that they feel are in the middle. And I call that sort of like the bespoke way of searching. Okay. okay for a word. And then we get the results based upon those entries. So if you imagine a word like procrastination, for example, I know it starts with P-R-O. I think there's a C in there. I think there's an R in there. And I'm sure it ends with O-N. And yes, that's one of the results, procrastination. Click on it, get the definition, example sentences. Um, if there's an image as well, I'll try to put images in there. So that was okay. one search. That was one search method. And then the other was, well, what about those who get their letters the wrong way around, right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted a second bespoke method whereby, again, three fields, but the letters that you put into the middle doesn't matter which way around. So is it the C before the R in procrastination or the R before the C? Still, you're gonna get the results. So spell aid is about a, a user having the app and choosing the settings that best works for them. And when we talk about the settings, because of the individuals that I come across, I wanted to include, you know, those who, for example, where fonts are important to them. So right. the mere fact that we can change and choose the font that we want is, is very important for some people. The color of the background. Can I change the color of the background? Can I change the, the color of the text? Yes. Can I get it to pronounce the word? Can I get it to spell the word out? It just kept on, I kept on adding and adding and adding ideas. And yes, eventually came up with spell aid, which I think um, I'd like to say is the most dyslexia friendly dictionary out there. <laughs> I've tried to really cater for, you know, all possibilities. And I mean, I mentioned the two bespoke ways. It still has the conventional search method. If those, those who want to use one field, fine, use one field, but maybe you want that background color change, that mm -hmm. specific font. That's, that's good for you to learn um, with. Or then I've added as well, um, pronunciation. Obviously, you know, some people do like to just say the word and find the word. Mm -hmm. So, but obviously that doesn't always work for people where English is a second language. So you might not be able to pronounce the word. So therefore using a different search feature, maybe one of the bespoke features is gonna enable you to find that word more easily. And that's what it's about. And, and it's funny enough, just the other day, um, I used it myself, as you do. <laughs> but so I, I had a moment, um, I had a moment where I was, I wanted to use the word enthusiast. Mm. And off the top of my head, I couldn't spell it. Right. So I was on my computer, so I used the search engine. But all that kept on coming up was enthusiastic. Okay. That's what kept on coming up. I was like, no, but this is not what I want. So what did I do? I picked up my iPad, E-N um, in, in, in the start. I know it ends with a T and I know it's got a T and a H in there somewhere. Before I know it, I've got the, the word right there, enthusiast. Fine, got it. And, you know, so even I can take advantage of it of time <laughs> at times. Absolutely, why not? Why not? Of course. So, so then, you know, from there that led on to, okay, well, this can work for kids. Right. right? Okay, let's, the, the main spell aid app is over 100,000 of English words, contains wow. Latin words, etc. But wanted a, a kid's version, which more sort of um, was focused on how we can make sure lots of images are in there. So it's a reduced vocabulary. Um, but, you know, you find the word giraffe or the word elephant, you know, there's a nice picture there as well to back it up. Um, so that was the kids version and then the medical version right. um, is more born out of working with um, nursing students, people, uh, medical students. Nurses. Yeah, so some of those, you know, big medical ter uh, terminology that I can't pronounce half the time. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think of one. Um, Dyskinsia is a word, I think. Um, you know, again, how can we use those search fields? I oh, know it starts with D-Y and it's got a K in it, it's got an N in it, and it ends with A. There it is, found. So that's what Spell Aid is all about. I think that that's amazing. And mm -hmm. I will say for the audience who is not aware um, mm -hmm. that Michael did write a blog post for Think Dyslexia. So I will definitely attach that in the, um, the show notes 
for you to take a look because I know you did talk about your own experiences with your your mom telling you to look it up in the dictionary. And so I thought your your um, blog post was excellent. So thank you for sharing more about Spell Aid because I know a lot of folks are really interested in knowing more about it. So that was excellent. So that leads me to my next question. So you've been in the assistive technology field for uh, 15 years? 15 years plus with um, technology experience and teaching experience before that as well. Yes. So tell us what the AT field, what does that entail? So our audience okay. has a better understanding. Okay. So over, like you said, about the last 15 odd years now, I've worked with predominantly university students okay. who have dyslexia, dyspraxia. And my, my role is to teach them how to get the most out of the assistive technology that they might have been given. So for example, I'm gonna be teaching them um, like text-to-speech software, for example. I'm gonna be showing them note-taking techniques and also teaching them note-taking software as well, how to get the most out of that. And of course, like um, speech-to-text as, right. as well, that type of software. So my, my sort of um, journey over the last 15 years has really been a case of being exposed to all the various different assistive technology software that's out there. I've seen a good, you come and go and um but you know the main thing is how can we empower the students mm -hmm. um those who are struggling in certain areas um maybe it's a case of um, they struggle to get the thoughts from their minds down to paper well then maybe voice recognition software is going to be of benefit to you whereby as soon as those thoughts come in you can just dictate and get those thoughts down right so as well as those who don't want to or can't maybe read or concentrate for long periods of time again it's going to be that text-to-speech software that mm -hmm. enables you to just like you know listen to the information and also that can be used as a way for some students to actually prove their work you know i'm sure we all do it you know we write something we read over it a thousand times and we don't spot the errors but actually when you listen back as well that's another right. technique to mm -hmm. actually check and prove your work so it's just showing the students these tools that are available to them. Um, I think, yeah, also including mind mapping type software as well, a like great way to sort of map out your ideas and that sort of stuff. This is all the stuff that I've been teaching over the last X amount of years. Let's not say 15. <laughs> yes, no, that's amazing. I know um, I've used inspiration and kidspiration. So okay. yes, yes. So those are uh, great mind maps for when I taught elementary school. We used Kidspiration, and it was great for those kids that had those ideas but couldn't really get them out. And so we would put pictures with them, and that was like their graphic organizer. So that's I'm mm -hmm. glad you brought that up. I mean, and I know it's, funny, it's funny you should say that because I know the guys from Inspiration very huh? well. In fact, I did, webinar, <laughs> I did a webinar. I did I did a webinar. Um, showcasing their software just the other day, but how we can get um, Dragon Professional to oh. work with inspiration. So rather than sort of those who don't want to use the mouse so much and so forth, all that sort of making of the mind maps and the various functions within inspiration can all be done by voice. That's a whole other subject that I'd love to share with you another time. Oh, yeah, we have to do a part two. That is amazing. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, great to hear that. That's lovely. yes. So you, so you mentioned you, you're in, you're at the university level, right? So those are the students. Yes. Yes. So mm -hmm. Is spell aid used for, um, just primarily at the university level or our school district? Because you're in London, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So is this used in the school districts in London, in in uh, the UK in general? Tell us more about where spell aid is is used. Okay. Yeah, so we get some, um, but I would say predominantly like primary schools is the term that we use here. Okay. Um, so, and that's really relating to the spell aid kids version. It, yes. But obviously, um, the word I would use is institutions. Okay. Um, so yes, it does get used by sort of, like I mentioned before, with the students, uh, nurses, medical type students, that type of thing as well. So yeah, it's, it's broad, but again, I think... Um, I would say that most are just coming from like anyone. So families or whatever, just someone wanting a different type of dictionary that they can actually yeah. um, tailor for their own use. Right. You know, right. it's not, it's not, 
you know, it's, there's no harm in having a dictionary to hand, I would say. Definitely. So even, even like for kids, maybe it's like using it to help children explore words, that type of thing, you know, and yeah, just trying to make it fun, make work learning fun as best as possible and as easy as possible at the end of the day. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. So my last question to you is <clears throat> about the book that you wrote um, mm -hmm. about the software, Dragon Software. So tell mm -hmm. us the title of your book and where we can get this book and okay. what you wrote about. Okay, so the book is titled Dragon Professional, A Step Further, okay. and it is about the software, as you said, Dragon Professional, which is one of the software that I actually teach. Um, and I, to be honest with you, I have a real passion for the software. I love the software. I mean, it's predominantly used for um, voice recognition, dictating, as I mentioned, getting your ideas down. But what you can also do is you can actually program it and create your own voice commands. That's so cool. over the years, I do quite a bit of that because I'm a bit busy trying to do 10 things at once. And I love the fact that I can create commands that when I say, you know, a bad example, hello, Mike, it goes off and opens a, a specific Word document and does X and does Y. But you need to know how to code it, yeah? And what I found over the years is that there's not much resources online for that. So um, a couple of years ago, um, sitting around the family table, I said, um, I'm going to write a book. And really, it started from the notes that I've made for myself. And the book is available. It's published. It's available on, you know, Amazon. usual Amazon, usual platforms, Barnes and Noble and so on and so forth. And it's really been received really well because the only other book out there is really, if I, I don't know if I can say the name, for D, that for them, that that line of books, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say, but that's really for beginners. That's how to turn it on, how to get started. But what my book explores is how you can create your own commands to automate your own, you know, um, sort of procedures or tasks that you do. And yeah, it's great. It's fantastic to see. I get emails from your side from America to as far as Australia, um, yeah. Dubai as well, where people have come back and commented on it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great journey and something that I've really enjoyed doing. And of course, using the tools as you would, started off by doing it all in a mind map, sure. yeah, getting my ideas down, getting my chapters down, what I wanted to talk about, what I wanted to explain. And hopefully like, from the responses that I've seen, I think I've come across nicely. You know, even though it is about teaching people how to code, quote unquote, that can be quite off-putting, but I try to make it as, um, I don't know what the word is, friendly as possible. You know, you don't, to make your own commands in, in Dragon, you don't have to be a geek, as it is. Sure. Well, that's good yeah. to know. Thanks for yeah, doing Absolutely, that. absolutely not. And I wouldn't want to come across in that way. And I'd like to think I don't come across in that way, no. especially when I'm teaching my students. Absolutely. Yeah, I want teaching to be fun. I want, I want to be, I want you to enjoy it. And, 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 and I've got to be enthusiastic about it as well, right? Sure. So hopefully that rubs off. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. I honestly, I feel like this was such like a nice breath of fresh air to talk about technology and it wasn't like just a dump. Sometimes I feel like when people talk about technology, that's not my strong suit at all. And I just mm -hmm. kind of laid over, you know, yeah. but you, you had it very user-friendly, you know, really, I, I can feel your passion and I know that the audience does as well. Great. So yeah. I just want to- It should be friendly. That's what it should be. You know, it's, yeah, it shouldn't be off putting, right? Exactly. In my opinion and your opinion, right? I, I absolutely agree. And yeah. you know, that's yeah. kind of where our world is going these days. You know, everything is yeah. in the palm of your hand. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Michael, thank you so much for finding some time for this interview. I am so thank excited you. to have you here and maybe we could let's do a part two let's let's yeah, i'd love to i'd love to share with you i've got some um you know further projects coming up Excellent. and obviously um yeah yeah well we're gonna stay in touch now Great. absolutely well thank you so much and have a good rest of your evening oh yes and you have a good rest of your day thank you so much <laughs> take Bye. care Bye.